Shabbat Shalom and last night we celebrate the outgoing of the seventh day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Anytime you see the number seven and the number three uh, used in the Bible, especially in the first five books of the Torah, uh, you can be sure na merong mga prophetic uh, hidden. And sometimes it's, most of the time, it's hidden in plain sight. No? Uh, so, itong prophetic patterns like the seventh day Sabbath, the seven festivals, the seven times seven uh, jubilee cycle, the seven years of famine, the seven years of plenty, these are actually parang kumbaga sa science. Ito parang program na may napakatalinong tao na gumawa nito na walang iba kundi ang Diyos. At uh, iniwan niya ito para sa kanyang mga lingkod. Kaya kasi hindi naman na gagawa uli yung bipolar. Gawa na yan eh. Iniwan na yan eh. Kompleto na yan eh. So, it's been canonized. So, and the Bible is the most enduring book of all time na hanggang ngayon, pinag-aaralan pa, pinag -ano pa. So, wala pong katapusan. So, here I think, uh, to me, as a Bible researcher myself, which is very passionate about uh, understanding the Torah and its significance in the New Testament, eh, this message that I'm going to give is uh, probably one of the most uh, uh, substantial uh, evidence na to prove our faith or our belief about the end times. So what I mean by that, eh, what I'm about to share to you is uh, a very uh, huge evidence sa ating paniwala na ang um, Tora nga, yung mga festival ay may pattern uh, ongoing pattern from the past, present, and future kung saan may mensahe dito ang uh, Diyos para sa ating lahat. So, nagtatagalog ako. May English ba rito? May Amerikano ba dito? Uh, you, Ronnie, you want me to speak English? See, you always speak to me in English eh. Huh? So, I sleepy. So, yun. So, 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 uh, so, I'm crediting this uh, lecture from a good friend of mine, which is Tony Robinson, no? Restoration of Torah Ministries. And he was able to decode this uh, end time uh, blueprint. Yung uh, notes na to. So, Sabi ka, there's nothing new under the sun. So mark your calendar. Uh, sabi ng Bible, teach us to number our days. So we count, uh, we are nine days from the piece of, uh, uh, eight or nine days of the Omer, no? So, so we are counting, so we, so today is the first cycle, seven. So we have one week now, sabi ng Bible, you shall count seven weeks, Shabua. And after the seven weeks, the following day is the fiftieth, which is the Pentecost, the Feast of Shavuot or Pentecost, the 50 days from the Feast of First Fruits. So yun po ang counting ng Shavuot. So exactly, that will fall on May 7. So, if you heard about the Christian uh, tradition about uh, the Pentecost Sunday, have you heard about Pentecost Sunday? Yes. yes, that's true. Pentecost is always on Sunday because the Bible says you count seven weeks. So, seven times seven, 49. Sabi niya, the day after the seven weeks is the day of Shavuot. Weeks means so the counting of the weeks. 
Ngayon, sa Greek, when the day of Pentecost is fully come, they were together in one accord. Pentecostal po ang background namin, no, naraw. So, naging penta. Ibig sabihin ng penta, 50. 50 dias mula doon sa eh, piece of first fruits. So, the entire... So, so meron tayong bishop sa, uh, sa audience. Uh, alam nyo, the entire uh, context ng resurrection ni Jesus Christ, ni Yeshua, the entire context of the Holy Communion, yeah, the entire context of the festivals are linked together coming from the original Exodus, the Feast of Passover, Unleavened Bread, Feast of First Fruits, Feast of Pentecost. These are nothing new. Hindi po bago ito. Kumbaga, what's so new about the New Testament except that it is fulfilled in the life of our Messiah, Yeshua. So here, sir, we call Jesus by His real name, Yeshua. No? So, so today in Israel, the Israeli Messianic believer, they call Him Yeshua. So I've been to Israel two times. It's verified. You can hear native Israeli believers call Yeshua. So, this is the kumbaga, foundation of the entire, kaya nga, uh, the last Passover, the message that uh, I had given is, it's more than a communion. Kumbaga, eh, in the Christian uh, circles, yung communion ay eh, kukuha ng piece of bread or skyplex, then magtimpla ng grapes, mag-holy communion tayo, at sometimes ginagawa ito every week, no? every month, depende kung ano na gusto ng congregation. So, actually po, communion is actually a theological term. But actually, the real uh, context of that is the peace of Passover and the peace of unleavened bread. So, yun. So, ngayon, uh, we're going to uh, deal particularly with the Exodus pattern in the New Testament. Okay. So, Exodus. Okay, last time, I did uh, quite an introduction on this topic. But I'm going to do this quickly, no? Ang pattern ng Exodus, everything can be traced back to the Garden of Eden from the very beginning. No? Uh, I think I shared to you about the uh, Hebrew last time. Very quickly, la, no? What's the first word in the Bible? Huh? Okay. Bere. Okay. This is the first word in the Bible. So, it actually means beginning. Okay? So, be is a uh, preposition in beginning. Actually, there's no da there. In the in the Hebrew, there's sa English in the beginning, di ba? In beginning lang, para bang wala siyang definite beginning. Wala siyang para basta in a, in a beginning but you can see that the the Hebrew language is very uh, mysterious no uh, mysterious in a way that there's a hidden message so you cannot see that in the English yeah. so in English po uh, ang sabi ng isang Isra, Israeli Hebrew scholar sabi niya reading the Bible in English is like kissing your wife with a veil so you, if you have, uh, if you're married, you understand. It's awkward, di ba? Di ba? Halikan mo yung imbis, imbis, sa, imbis sa, sa lips, ang hinalikan mo, tela. Ibig sabihin, wala siya masyadong intimacy. No? Hindi siya masyadong malalim. <laughs> so, so in, in Hebrew, ito po, the word, Bet Resh Alep, uh, Shin Yod Tab, itong salitang Reshit actually, 
reshit sa English is actually means the first. The first. We can say the first fruit. Yun po ang, uh, ang uh, root word ng reshit. First fruit. First born. The beginning. So, who is the beginning? In the beginning was the Word and the Word was God and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So the first two words in the Hebrew Bible is bet res, which means bar. Bar is the Hebrew word for son. So literally, why was there a beginning? Why was so the Creator created the beginning for the sake of beginning. So what is the beginning? It's the first is the sun. The var. The, the beginning is the Messiah, the sun. The beginning is the the word, the Torah. is The, the beginning was created for the sake of the purpose of the creation of the beginning was because of the Son. It is confirmed in the New Testament. Amen. Everything was created by the Son, by the Word. Amen. Then, everything, the, the purpose of the beginning is, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. The Torah. Word is equals the Torah. Kasi wala pa no New Testament dun eh. And the third one is the controversial one. Hindi ko na muna sabihin. Kasi nakalimutan kayo. Iipon ko pa yung verse. But the, the answer to that is for the sake of Israel. So, so yun. So, meron, so, so what I'm trying to say here is may, meron pong hidden prophecies. May hidden codes. Which you can only found in Hebrew. So, sometimes ako, actually, meron ng experience, yung may kilala akong bishop dito sa Pasay City. Nakalimutan ko yung pangalan niya. Dito sa Alternative, Richer, Richer Alternative Hospital. Nag-volunteer kami dyan eh. So, yung in-house na bishop doon, uh, I was talking about Hebrew. Medyo nag-react siya na hindi maganda. So, ba't ka Hebrew-Hebrew eh? Hindi naman tayo Hebrew. At hindi naman tayo maintindihan ng tao ng Hebrew pang nangaral tayo ng Hebrew. Sabi ko, hindi nga tayo Hebrew, pero kung gusto ko maintindihan ng Biblia using the Hebrew, mas epektibo. Mas nakakaintindi ako. So, baka siguro ang ibig niyang sabihin, kung gusto mo mag-evangelism, ala nga naman mag-Hebrew-Hebrew ka pa. Siyempre, that's the point. Kasi nga, iba yung ministry niya, evangelism. Iba yung ministry ko, teacher ako eh. Pang Bible school ito eh. So, hindi lahat teacher, hindi lahat evangelist. Okay? Pero that's the point. We need the Hebrew as a tool to understand more deeply the Bible. O, limbawa, example. Uh, anong ibig sabihin Anong pangalan ng Panginoon sa Hebrew? Yeshua. So ngayon, anong pangalan niya sa Greek? Jesus. Anong pangalan niya sa Latin? Jesus. Anong pangalan niya sa English? So nakita nyo, actually it's a transliteration. Pag nagsasalita yung mga apostoles na mga hudyo, ang pag nakinig yung mga grego, hindi nila mabikas yung Yeshua. Bakit? Walang let, walang ye sa, sa Greek. Walang letter uh, ye sound. Walang ye sound. The closest pronunciation sa Greek ay Iesus. Iesus. So, so, like in China, David, what's the name of Jesus in China? Yes. Huh? Yes. 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 Yes.
Siyempre tayo po ay medyo Latinized. Nauna po kasi mga Katoliko dito si, si Jesus. Ngayon, anong meaning ng Jesus? Maliban sa pangalan ng isang tao. Pero kung sa Hebrew, napakalinaw. Okay, Hebrew. May liit ito, Brad. Yung back to back. Yan o. Ilinisin mo yan. Yung malaki o. Ay, yan. Trapo lang yan. Yan o. O. Yan ang pangalan niya. Ye. Yod Shin Bab Ain Yeshua Ngayon, ang kanyang eh, Ang kanyang uh, Verb ay Yasha Yasha So, ano big sabi niya? Ang Yasha, yun yung sinabi sa context ng Angel Gabriel You shall name this child Yeshua For he shall Yasha His people You shall name this boy Salvation Because he will be saving His people So it makes perfect sense That the Angel Gabriel was a Hebrew speaking angel Diba? <laughs> so ngayon, kung kukunin mo ang ibig sabihin ng Yasha, the, the root word, ang salitang ugat, is to save, to rescue, to deliver, and to give victory. Perfect! This is exactly what Jesus Christ did, Yeshua HaMashiach did, to save people, to rescue people from the bondage of sin, to give them deliverance, to rescue them, and finally to give them victory. Yes. Celebrate Jesus, celebrate. <laughs> exactly. So, natingnan nyo po, kaya lang, in spirit, ang ating mga kababayan na hindi pa nakarinig sa kanyang tunay na pangalan sa Hebrew, naramdam nila sa spirit na siya ngayon si Jesus na yun. Di ba? Pero, Kumbaga ako, ay ang pangalan ko sa dito ay ay, di ba? Pero if I go home to Sambuanga, my name when I was growing up there was actually not Ike. It's Iking. Oh, Iking. And my best friends, my closest friends was call me King. So, but When I was born again, napalitan ng Ike, hindi ko bakit eh, tinawagan ako Ike. Because biblically, change of name is biblically. Abraham, Abraham to Abraham. Sarai to Sarah. Diba? Jacob to Israel. So it's okay to, like Paul, eh, Shaul. Bakit Shaul? Shaulado niya kasi ang Biblia. <laughs> So, sa tabi ko, kaya minsan ayaw ko na mag-joke eh. Mawawala eh. So, but my passport name, my official name actually is Enrique. Okay? Alam mo, naalala ko yung lola ko. Ang lola ko, pag tum junior kasi ako, pag tumawag sa tatay ko, Enrique. Enrique! Sulit ka dito. Talagang yung tunay niyong pangalan. Ang lolo ko naman, Basilio! <laughs> diba? So yung mga, ang tawag ng lola ko sa kanyang mga anak, ay mga original niyang mga binigay niya pangalan. Walang palayaw. So it depends who is doing the calling, no? So, but pag tinawagan mo ako, I, surely I will know it, it is me. If my friends in Zamboanga, they call me Iking or King, exactly, I know it's me. But, kung nakapila ako sa DFA, sa any government office, 
it should be Enrique. Di ba? Enrique. Okay. Yeah. So, so ganun lang. So, there's no debate in that. Uh, uh, pinapaliwanag lang. No? So, background ng Hebrew. Because eh, we love to explain things in Hebrew. So, Okay, Rabbi Shaul states in Corinthians 10, verse 11, All these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Ang sinabi po ni Apostol Pablo, ang mga bagay daw na nangyari sa Israel noong araw ay sinulat para sa kapakanan ng mga present generation upon whom the ends of the world are come. Ibig sabihin, nakasulat ito, mga pangyayari noon, sinulat para daw maintindihan ng kasalukuyang kausap niya, mga taga-Kurinto. Pero sabi niya, ito daw ay upon whom the ends of the world are come. Nangyari ito sa kanila bilang babala sa iba at nasulat upang turuan tayong mga inabot ng huling panahon. So according to Apostle Paul, alam mo, prophecies, itong mga lingkod ng Diyos, ito ay nagsasalita pero minsan lumalabas sa kanila prophecy. No, they were inspired by the Holy Spirit. And sometimes, they do not even understand what they are saying during their time. Like, example, si Apostle John, sa palagay nyo, nung sinulat niya yung book of Revelation, eh, nakita niya ba na nagkaroon ng mga nuclear war in the future? Wala, puro, dinescribe sa kanya, pero yung detalye, hindi niya, Hindi niya alam. Baka hindi, baka hindi siya maroon mag-drawing ng aeroplano. Diba? So, ibig sabihin, the words of the Bible are prophecies. Prophecy. Mga prophetic utterance. So, Paul understood the prophetic nature of the stories of the Torah. Sa tandaan niya, mga kapatid, if you've been studying Torah for a while, the Torah is the blueprint of all prophecies. The mother of all prophecies. Kasi, akala ng iba, ang prophecy, ay nandun sa mga, na mga propeta, sina Daniel, Ezekiel, sina Isaiah, Jeremiah, yan yung mga propeta, kasi kaya nga sulat ng mga propeta. Hindi po. Sino ang unang propeta? Si Abraham, the prophet, ang tawag kanya sa, sa, nung nasa Egypt sila, no? Huwag sabi lang sa kanya, huwag niyong galawin si Abraham, isang propeta. Propeta ang tawag kay Abraham. Pangalawang propeta ay si Moses. No? So, example, nung nagkaroon ng Abrahamic Covenant, Si Abraham ay nakipagtipanan sa Diyos. Nagkaroon siya ng parang ano ba yun? Parang siya ay inaantok na habang nakipagtipan sa Diyos. At sinabi sa kanya ng Diyos, bago matupad ang pangako ko sa iyo na makapasok ang iyong mga descendant sa promised land, sila muna ay magkaroon magiging bihag sa Egypto ng 430 years. So, isipin mo na lang kay Abraham. Sa, si, si, si. So, ibig sabihin, ang tagal pa pala nito, Lord. <laughs> Hindi ko pa pala sa, kaya sabi ni Abraham, he was, sabi ng Bogo Hebrews, he was looking for a city whose maker and builder is God. So, they died in faith, believing, hindi nila na-experience, no? So, of all other uh, people living on earth today, who will ever live? To whom do you think the book of Revelation would be most relevant? The book of Revelation should be most relevant to the gener generation who will experience its events. 
The most relevant generation is the last generation. Who is the last generation, mga kapatid? We are. I personally believe, and most scholars believe, we are the last generation who will witness all these end-time prophecies written in the Bible, most especially in the book of Revelation. It will happen right before our eyes. And it's happening right now. And all the prophecy teachers ngayon, they're so aware about Gog and Magog. It's Russia and China, Magog, 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 Magog. Kasi ang prophecy niya, in the end time, Gog and Magog will make war with Israel. So, according to this calendar, mga kapatid, which is a controversial one, tumama po ang Tingnan nyo po yung itim. Ito po yung sabbatical year computation ng Hebrew calendar. Sabi nyo mo, there will be war in this cycle. Tumama hindi? Tumama. Yan no? Kung baka sabi niya, there will be war that will affect the entire world which includes America, and it's happening right now, yung tensions sa Russia, no? You can see the current events. Sometimes, mga kapatid, alam mo, we, you can get carried away with current events. Current events, political events, they change their course from time to time. Kaya minsan ako, malilito ako pag seryosohin mo yung end-time events. Pero pag nakapokus ka sa Bible, alam mo, yan na yung nangyayari. No? And some prophecy teachers, they're so focused in current events, and pabago-bago yung current events, kaya pabago-bago yung kanilang statement. So tayo, nakapix lang tayo sa Jubilee Cycle Calendar, at sabi nga, pag may war, di may war, kung sino man ang mag-away dyan, di, wala na akong pakialam dyan. Basta meron war. So, it's a political thing. No? First Corinthians chapter 10, uh, Paul was explaining the splitting of the Red Sea as a sign of baptism of Israel. The provision of bread and water the manna that came from heaven and Corinthians 5 to 10 is a reference to the events that occurred during their wilderness journey so they are all intended thank you for the last generation so what's the connection between the events in the exodus and the last generation the exodus from egypt and journey, journey to the promised land were simply prophetic shadows of a greater exodus and journey which is to occur in the last days. The story of the exodus of the people of Israel from Egypt culminating in their arrival, conquest, and settlement in the land of Canaan is a foreshadowing of the exodus of the last generation of Yahweh's people from the world into the millennial kingdom. So, yun po ang pattern. So, ito yung, ito yung, ito yung pinag-aaralan natin yung prophecy based on patterns. No? Patterns from the Torah. This is, this is not something new. Okay, la, ganito. Okay, tuloy natin. Minsan, nauuna ko yung ano eh. Dapat hintayin mo yung slide. Okay. The exodus of the people of Israel from Egypt and their journey through the wilderness is thematically equivalent to the final exodus of the body of Christ, the Messiah, out of the world system and their journey through the wilderness of the nations. The possession by the children of Israel 
of the promised land, the land flows with milk and honey, is thematically equivalent to the possession of the millennial kingdom by the Messiah. So, one day is like a thousand years unto the Lord. The six days of creation corresponds to the six thousand years of, from the creation of Adam. The coming of the Messiah will precede the millennial kingdom, which is 1,000 years. So a total of 7,000 years. So ibig sabihin, may plano ang Diyos good for 7,000 years. Kumbaga sa architect, may timetable siya for completion the project. No? Uh, itong project, matapos to sa isang taon, tapos to. Pero bago matapos yan, dapat uh, pace by pace, meron tayong uh, construction update dyan. Pero dapat December 2023, tapos to. So ang Diyos, parang ganon. Sinasabi niya, ang isang araw, sa kanya, isang libo sa tao, kaya mainipin tayo, eh, tagal naman, Lord. Eh, kasi nga, from a human perspective, we cannot even imagine what it is like to live for 100 years because most people die before 100 years old. We don't even, we cannot imagine ano ang buhay ng 100 years old ka na. Okay, okay. Take for a moment. Think about yourself. 100 years old ka na. Ano kaya itsura mo? Baka kuba ka na gayan. Tapos isasampay ka na lang doon sa sampay. Kasi nagkagano'n eh. So, uh, unimaginable, di ba? Ganon. So, kaya nga ang Word of God, eh, hindi mag-gets natin. Kasi nga, so, ang sinasabi rito, yung Exodus ng Israel galing sa Egypt ay parang Exodus ng bayan ng Diyos so, the prophetic parallels book of Exodus in the book of Revelation. The theme of the first 15 chapters of the book of Exodus is let my people go out of Egypt. One of the major themes in the book of Revelation is of for the people of Yahweh to come out of Babylon, the false system of religious and political worship. In both instances, Adonai Yahweh is interested in his people living a system of life which is opposite that is found in the Torah. Okay. Let me give you uh, where this uh, pattern is coming from. Walang iba ito. Pinanggalingan ito sa Garden of Eden. In explain ko to the other night. Ang unang Amat ina, si Adam and Eve were the first couple in the Garden of Eden, which is the first tabernacle. The Garden of Eden is the first Holy of Holies. Kasi the holy place, the Holy of Holies is where God speaks. Di ba? God was talking in the cool of the day. So the first tabernacle actually is the Garden of Eden. The Holy of Holies. Meron dong tree of life which it represents the words of Torah, the words, the instructions for life. At meron doon the mixture of good and evil, the tree. So the word mixture, take note, is Babel. It means Babel. Mixture of good and evil. No? So, nung nagkasala po ang uh, tao, they were exiled from the garden. So literally, they were exiled from the presence of God. Lumayo ng lumayo sila. Kaya sinara ng dalawang kerubim ang tree of life. Kasi tree of life is an eternal tree. Kung magkasala sila at bumalik sila kumain doon, wala na silang kamatayan. Forever na sila walang kaligtasan. Kaya sinara. Ang tao naging masama ng masama sa, hanggang sa panahon ni Noe. Hanggat sa dumating na yung Tower of Babel. Nakita nyo na? Nandun yung pattern. Presence of God, 
exile, Babel. Ibig sabihin, bondage. Uh, Babel is the system that is opposite to the system of God, which is the righteousness of the commandments. So, tapos, so, ang, so yun din ang pattern sa book of Revelation. Sinabi ron, come out of Babylon. Sabi ron, come out of her, lest you receive her plagues. So, we will discuss this uh, more in details mamaya, yung Babylon na to, kung ano ito. So, basically, Babylon represents from the very beginning is the mixture of good and evil. Di ba? This is something na good, pero there's something evil in it. No? So, everything you can see today, yung mga inimbento ng tao, Uh, we can say it can be used for good and evil. Internet is good, but it's used, it also used for evil purposes. Yes. So, everything you can you see is actually uh, sort of a Babylon. Diba? Music. Music, praise and worship, diba? It's very good. But it could also be used or bad. Like rock and roll. Di ba? So, things like that, no? Ang religion, it is something that is good. Kasi mahirap naman walang religion yung tao. Di ba? Pero, kung a religion ay pasambahin ka sa revolto, it's evil. So, it's good and evil. So, Babylon is a religious and a political uh, system. So, what's the theme of the book of Revelation? The major theme of the book of Revelation is the exodus of God's people from the world. Ang pag-exit ng mga hinirang ng Diyos sa mundo para iligtas sila. So, kasi nga, God's people are not appointed to rat galit. Ang judgment ng Book of Revelation ay nakataon sa mga taong ayaw maglingkos sa Diyos. Mga Babylon spirit. Yung mga hinirang ng Diyos, nililigtas ng Diyos. Ano ibig sabihin ng ligtas? Sa Hebrew? Yes. Yasya. Anong ibig sabihin ng Yasya? To save, to rescue, to deliver, and to give victory. In some Christian circle, ang tawag nila dito, para wala nang maraming problema, rapture. Rapture is different from salvation. Iba po ang salvation sa rapture. Bigyan kita example. Ito, pattern din. During the time of the judgment in Sodom and Gomorrah, niligtas ng mga anghel si Abraham at si Lot at ang kanyang pamilya. When judgment came, Lot And Abraham was at the city gates negotiating with God. Di ba? Pag binasa mo yung Genesis, sinabi ron, nandun sila sa gates. Alam mo bakit sa gate? Because the courts, mga courts, ay located in the gates of the city. It reminds me of the statement of Yeshua na sabi niya, The gates of hell shall not prevail. Ibig sabihin, yung mga city courts, yung mga political courts, will not even prevail against you. So, yun po yung context. So, nung ginudge po si Abraham and uh, Lot and, uh, and Sodom and Gomorrah, Sodom and Gomorrah was described with fire and brimstone, di ba? Niligtas sila ng anghel. Nagkita mo? They were in the middle of the 
judgment, pero nothing shall harm them. So this is a picture of how God saves His people. Mamamangha ka. Just imagine if you were Moses and the Israel, hinabol ka ni Pero, at nando na, na corner na kayo sa gilid ng Red Sea, at hinarang ng pillar of fire ang kalaban, at sumigaw si Moses, Stand still and see the salvation of Yahweh. So ano yung salitang salvation sa Hebrew? Yeshua, actually, ang sinigaw ni Moses, Yeshua Adonai. Salvation of Adonai. Yeshua Adonai. So, if we translate more from uh, English, actually, Jesus is Yahweh. Parang sinabi, ang kaligtasan ni Yahweh, ang Yeshua ni Yahweh, we relax lang tayo, stand still, at nabuksan nyo dagat. Ang tanong, sinong unang tatalon? Sinong unang tumalon? Kung, kung tayo, sino kaya unang tatalon sa atin? Si Brother Ike? O mauna si Florence? O muna? Mamaya, magsara uli yan eh. O kaya, sinong na si David? Itutulak ko. Siya yung tulak sa akin. <laughs> so the point is by faith pag niligtas ka na ng Diyos tumakbo si, Ad, si Abraham and Lord ngayon sabi niya huwag tumalikot tumalikot yung asawa niya huwag lumingo yun yung instruction eh so take note this is a pattern of how God saves his people example number two Noah and the flood Noah was saved by the flood He was saved by the ark that God provided. No? Noah and the family was in the middle of the flood. Imagine mo, 40 days and 40 nights ka sa arko na gumaganon-ganon sa lalim ng tubig. Natatakot din sila. Pero alam nila na ang kamay ng, ang sabi nun, ang kamay ng Diyos ang nagsara sa pintuan ng arko. And God saved Noah and his family. This is a picture of salvation, mga kapatid. Okay, in the time of Israel, during the ten plagues, first plague, second plague, na experience ng Israel. From the third plague, hanggang sa tenth plague, ang sabi doon, Israel was in the land of Goshen, at hindi sila naapektuhan ng plagues ng ulan na yelo, ulan na apoy, namatay yung mga hayop, mga langaw, mga insekto. And pagdating ng 10th plague, which is the death of the firstborn, doon na, nag-exit na sila. Ibig sabihin, they were saved. They were saved. In fact, it is believed that The day that Israel crossed the Red Sea was on the feast of first fruits. Prophetically. If you read the Genesis, Noah's Ark landed in Mount Ararat in the 17th day of Abib, which is the feast of first fruits. Which means a sign of the resurrection. If ark is a symbol of salvation, the day the ark rested in the mountain after 40 days and 14, that was a symbol of the new life. That's right. Foreshadowing the salvation in Christ. So, nakita nyo po, walang pattern ng rapture out. Walang pattern ng rapture out. So, I'm sorry to say, I'm not in favor of the rapture theology. Because if you believe in the rapture, wala. Wala ka nang gagawin. It's a false uh, dichotomy na siyempre, kung ma-rapture ka, di wala ka nang gagawin. 
Actually, in fact, I believe napakaraming gagawin. In the book of Exodus, the prophetic parallel in the book of Exodus, in the book of Revelation, in the Exodus, Yahweh used plagues against Egypt to encourage the Egyptians to repent and know Yahweh, God of the Hebrews. In the book of Revelation, Adonai used plagues to encourage men to repent from their sins. There are many similarities between the plagues in Exodus and those in the book of Revelation. Okay. So basically, Example, in the book of Revelation, it is written in 8.7, Hail and fire was mixed with blood. So in the Exodus of Egypt, meron ding hail. hail. In Exodus 9.10, there is a plague of boils. Ano yung boils sa Tagalog? Pigsa. In Revelation 16, 1-2, there was a grievous sore to appear upon those who had the mark of the beast. So, sore, pigs, parang yun nga, pigsa. So, may repetition. And so on and so forth, no? We will go back to that later. We'll go back to that later. We still have time. But very quickly lang, I'm going to, dapat kagabi ko to tinuro, the Feast of Passover and prophecy. Mga batid, lahat na ito, huwag kayong malito, these are just blueprints and patterns. Kung baga po, if you are an architect or a civil engineer, if you follow the plan according to the blueprint, you will not go wrong. Hindi ka magkakamali kasi nandun na yung approved plan, kung baga. Okay? So, Passover. In what way, this is another uh, research na ginawa ng isang website which is easytora.com. Yun po ang gumawa ng reserve na to. The four cups This is another teaching by Monte Judah, the final redemption of Israel, the greater exodus. In short, mga kapatid, end times is about the great exodus of God's people. Naintindihan niyo po ba? E-exit ang mga hinirang ng Diyos sa sistema ng mundo para iligtas niya kasi yung judgment darating sa mundo ito. Ganun po, ganun po kalinaw, no? Bakit kanya i-exit? Kasi ililigtas kanya. Ano ba yung ibig sabihin kaligtasan? I-preserve kanya, bibigyan kanya ng salvation, at hanggang sa makarating sa pagbalik niya, nandung ka pa, buhay ka pa. So exciting ito. Pangako niya ito eh. Okay, sino dito na yung nag-celebrate ng Piso Passover? Halos lahat, no? Di po ba may apat na cup doon? And some, some people think na ang mga four cups of wine na iniinom sa Passover is simply tradition. Kumbaga, tradition ng mga Hudyo yan. Na, ano. Alam nyo po, may tradition na nasa Biblia, may tradition wala sa Biblia. Ang Hudyo, talagang maraming tradition. No? Isang tradisyon ng mga Hudyo, alam niyo kung ano? Yung pagsuot ng sombrero. Niricute ako ni na Marvin eh. Kani na bili ka. Hindi, kaya ako nagsombrero kasi gusto ko lang. Gusto ko lang, feel ko lang. So, para maiba naman. Pag tinan mo yung kultura ng Hudyo, palagi silang nasusunod ng sombrero at yung may kipa, no? Alam niyo po yun, ang ibig sabihin nun, ina-acknowledge nila na may Diyos na nakatingin sa kanila palagi. Tsaka, pag pumunta sila sa ibang lugar, kasi ang Hudyo, mga negosyante yan eh, pag pumunta sila sa mga ibang bansa, ma-identify mo agad sila. 
Ayun. Punjo yan. So makikilala ko, punjo ka pala eh. Hey Jew. Kami. <laughs> so, so, cup. So during the Passover, say there four cups of wine are drunk to commemorate the way that God delivered Israel from slavery. The four cups are the cup of sanctification, the cup of deliverance, the cup of redemption, betrothal, and the cup of restoration. The four cups of wine that are drunk to commemorate the Passover from the slavery in Egypt came from Exodus chapter 6, verse 6 to 7, which says like this, I am... I am Yahweh, I will bring you out from under the border burdens of the Egyptians. I will rescue you from their bondage. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgment. And I will take you as my people and I will be your God. So yung apat na cup na yan, siya yan. Anaalala niya yan, nung nakarang linggo. No? So... Yan, first cup, second cup, third cup, fourth cup. Ang tradisyon na ito ay ginawa ng ating Panginoon sa huling araw niya. At mga apostoles. Anong sabi niya? I will not drink this cup until you will be with me in the kingdom. What kingdom is he referring to? The coming 1,000 years when he will rule and reign for 1,000 years. On earth, Bakit may emphasis? Saan magahari ang Panginoon? Here. On heaven or on earth? Yes. Or both? both? Wala pa yung new heavens and new earth. New heavens and new earth, sa dulo-dulo na yun, pag na-restore na ang lahat ng bagay, tsaka babalik yung New Jerusalem. Sa pandang huli na yun, matagal pa yun. Pero yung 1,000 years, the Millennial Kingdom actually is the 1,000 years of restoration of everything that was lost. The removal of sin from the world which will take 1,000 years. These are actually the promised kingdom na sinasabi. So, sumaliwanag so na yan, no? Which I mean, in my father's house are many mansions. Bakit mansion? Kasi sa King James Version, maraming mansion sa England eh. Ibig sabihin sa literally, it means in my father's house are many accommodations or places. When I come back, I will prepare a place for you so that when I come back, where am I? There you will be also. Ngayon, ang pastor ko no, nagsabi, Di baling kubo-kubo na ang iyong bahay dito sa lupa. May mansion ka naman sa langit. Oo wow. nga, pastor, no? Hindi na ako maghangad ng mansion dito. Kasi may meron pala sa langit na lang pala, pastor. Eh, yung intindi ko noon eh. Pero kung intindihin mo buti, sinasabi ng Panginoon, May sa, sa, sa bahay ng aking ama ay maraming lugar. So that pagbalik ko, kung nasa na ako, nandun ka. Nasa niya, sa langit o sa lupa. Sino yung sabi sa langit? Jeff. So I will talk to you later. <laughs> Sinasabi sa lupa? O, papiliin ko na lang kayo. Saan yung gusto? Langit o lupa? Lupa. Ha? Lupa. Saan gusto nyo? Langit o lupa? Ha? Saan ba ginawa ang tao? Lupa. Ang unang magulang, saan galing? Sa lupa o sa langit? Lupa. Nakita nyo? Pag namatay ang tao, anong nagiging? Lupa. Lupa. Diba? Meron ngang bago ngayon eh. Diba? May cremation. 
Cremation is not advisable actually. So merong bago ngayon way to to bury the dead dead people. It's decomposition. Ginagawa silang abono. Kasi compatible sa lupa eh. Di ba? Alam mo, ang sabi ng mga scientists, lahat ng minerals na nasa katawan ng tao, meron sa lupa. So tama yung sinabi ng Biblia, nilikha ang tao mula sa alikabok sa lupa, hiningaan siya ng buhay na galing sa Diyos. So saan galing yung spirito ng tao? Sa langit. Kasi nandun ang Diyos eh. Pero hiningaan siya dito sa lupa. Kasi sa langit ay ang mga espiritu. Tingnan niyo ang katabi niyo, mga espiritu yan. Kung katabi niyo yung asawa niyo, hawakan niyo yung asawa niyo. Kung espiritu, espiritu niya, hindi mo na mayakap yan. Ay, wala na. Wala ka ng kaligayahan. Espiritu eh. So, mga kapatid, In my father's house, alam mo yung tinutukoy na father's house niya? Is the temple in Jerusalem. Hello? Diba? Nung hinanap si ang Panginoon, nung siya ay uh, hinahanap siya ng nanay niya kasi nag-ipag-debate siya doon sa mga rabay, sabi niya, I'm here in my father's house. So Yeshua was probably talking about the coming temple in Jerusalem in the end times kung saan sabi niya, may accommodation dito, you can visit me here. No? Which is located right in Jerusalem. Jerusalem will be the center of God's kingdom in the coming millennial kingdom. Some people have a hard time understanding that. They don't like it. He will rule and reign from Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the holy city. So, from the name itself, Okay, may revelation dito. Do you want to know a secret? Yes. Oh, ito, ito. Ito yung ibig sabihin ng Yerushalayim, oh. Yan. Yerusha Layim. Yan. So, ang root word dyan is Shalayim. Ang dulo yan, im. Im. It's not plural. It's dual. Pag sinabi mong mata, dalawang mata, ay naim. Pag dalawang paa, reglayim. Pag sinabing... Uh, so dalawa, osnayim. Tenga. Yerushalayim is Yeru City of Shalom. Ilan daw ang City of Shalom? Dalawa. One city in earth, one city in heaven. In the last, after the millennial kingdom, they will merge together as one. Oh, ngayon, paano mo alisin ang literal yan? So literal and spiritual yan. Dalawa yan. Pag sa Hebrew, intindi mo agad yan. Dalawang Jerusalem. Kaya meron sa langit, bababa the city of God. Ito yung city whose maker and builder is God na hinihintay ni Abraham. Ito yung na gusto niyang makita na hindi niya nakita. Looking for a city. Okay. So, the first cup is the cup of sanctification, di ba? 
Maruga ta Adonai, loy mong alam, muna yung priyagapin. The start of the seder, di ba? The cup of sanctification. I will set you apart. Ibig sabihin, sanctification, I will ibubukot kita. Ikaw ay akin, sila ay hindi sa akin. Sila ay kalaban ko, mga Egypto. Kayo ay aking palangga. Kayo yung aking mga huli people, set apart people. So, Sabi ni Aduna, I will make a distinction between you and the Egyptian. So, ang principle doon, iba ang pagkikipagtungo ng Diyos sa kanyang hiniram, kanyang mga lingkod, iba ang pagkikitungo niya sa mga kalaban niya. Sa mga Egyptian, mga oppressors. So, we could say mga kapatid, the theme of the great, uh, the book of Revelation, we can say, sabi nga ng scholar na ito, from the first 15 chapters of the book of Revelation, explains the coming, the coming out or the exodus of God's people from Babylon. Ano yung Babylon? A system, a religious political system of deception. And it's, it's both a political, it's a government, it's a nation's competitors of nations. And I can tell you na part of it is the United Nations. Kasi yung United Nations, although they are united, gumagawa sila ng batas against the law of God. Saan ba galing yung LGBT law? Nasa United Nations. Ang United Nations ang nag sponsor ng mga batas na gusto nila na may pondo yan sa kung saan saan ang galing. Na-approve ba yan sa Pilipinas? Na-approve po. Walang kumontra. Nakakahiya po yung mga pastor na congressman nandun. Walang kumontra kahit isa. Hindi ba nila alam na galit ang Diyos sa ganyan? Buti hindi pinasot pinatupad sa Senado. Pero sa ang Congress, naaprubahan. Muntik nang naaprubahan ng same-sex marriage. At nakakalungkot, yung ating mga political leader ay nagko-compromise na. Sige. Sabi nga ng presidente noon eh, kung yan ang gusto nyo, ibigay ko sa inyo. Ah, nung sinabi niya, nag-earthquake sa Dabao. At bumaha sa Dabao. Nasunog yung pinakamalaking mall sa Davao. Hindi nila naintindihan. You are inviting God's wrath and judgment. When something is an abomination, you call it good. So, so why is Babylon called the mother of harlots? Ibig sabihin, adulterer, unfaithful to God. Revelations 19.2 He has condemned the great prostitute and avenged the blood of his servants. Ibig sabihin, ang political system ng Babylon ay ito po, katulad ng Egypto, ito ay pumapatay. Pati mga lingkod ng Diyos, gusto niyang patayin sa paraan na kaya niya. Di ba si Pero? Humabol pa? Pinalaya niya na humabol pa at papatayin lahat? Pero nag-intervene ng Diyos. Sino yung namatay? Lahat ng sundalo niya. Si Pero lang yung buhay. So nakita niyo yung picture of salvation? Rescue? Deliverance? Bring you to safety? And give you victory? Sino yan? Kasi isyo ah. Kasi minsan kasi, na misinterpret tayo na puro tora ang pinag-uusapan. Wala na daw si Jesus. No. Eh, kanina nga pinatunayan ko sa inyo. Si Jesus was in the very beginning of creation. Eh. He was the reshit. He was the first fruits of all creation. The, cre the beginning was created for the first. Who is the first? The Word. Who is the Word? The Word became flesh. 
to him. Everything is about Yeshua, if you understand me correctly. Hindi natin dinidiminish si Yeshua, dinidiin pa natin na siya ang living word. Okay. Ito po ang connection ng four cups of wine of the Passover Seder. At sabi ng research na ito, and the four hallelujah. May apat na hallelujah na binanggit sa book of Revelation. Sa chapter 19, verse 1 to 6. This is the only place in the New Testament where this word is used four times. It would seem that Adonai reserved this fourfold proclamation of praise, hallelujah, for the climatic stage of His program for humanity. After these things, I heard a great voice of many nations, many people, saying, Hallelujah, salvation, glory, honor, and power unto God. For He has redeemed us, for though Thou wast slain, has redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred, people, tongues, peoples, and nations. I heard a great voice of many people. So, and has made us a kingdom of priests and kings, and we shall reign on the earth. So, ang sabi dito sa research na to, the first cup of the Passover is parallel to the first hallelujah, which is the cup of sanctification, the setting apart of God's people. The next is the cup of judgment. I will rescue you from the oppression of the bondage. So in this case, the uh, book of Revelation, God rescued His people from the mother harlot from Babylon. Ni rescue tayo. Ibig sabihin sa end times na ito. Ipre-preserve ng Diyos ang kanyang mga hinira. Yan ang paniwala natin. Kasi, sabihin mo kasi, yung, eh, Brother Ike, eh, paano eh, kung end times na, ipe-persecute eh, yung mga saints ng Diyos, eh, sigurado, alam na. Alam na. Alam mo, every time you use Google, every time you use YouTube, alam niya kung nasaan ka. Lalo na kung nilagay mo yung location. Kaya i-off mo yun, huwag mo palagi on yun. Punta ka sa Google uh, settings, i-turn off mo yung location. Kasi doon sa location, namumonitor ka kung saan ka pupunta. <laughs> Kalawis. Nandun ka na sa Kalawis. Every time na bibiyahe ka, daladala -dala mo yung cellphone mo, alam na kung saan ka pupunta. So, kung tutusin, wala tayong ligtas sa sistema ni Antichrist. Pero, ito lang masasabi ko. Dahil pangako ng Diyos, I will set you apart. I will redeem you from the bondage of the oppressor. In this case, pero in the old, in the modern is Babylon. Yan ang pinahawakan ko. So, believe God for a miracle. Do you believe God for a miracle in the end times? Yes. Yan papasok yung faith. Yan papasok yung pananampalataya. Para ano ba tayo naglilingkot? Para ano ba tayo nagsasamba? Para ano ba tayo mag-aaral? Bakit? Para tumibay ang iyong faith. Para tumibay na lahat ng sinabi ng Biblia, totoo. Alam mo, I've been studying the Bible non-stop for the last 17 years. Wala akong mali na kita eh. Kung meron man mali, hindi yung Biblia. Yung translator or interpretation or yung mindset ng tao nagbabasa. Walang mali, perfect siya, grabe. So now we have the second hallelujah, the camp of vindication and 
the second cup, the hallelujah for justice. God will redeem his people with an outstretched arm. It is compared to the smoke of the Babylon rising forever, signifying ultimate defeat of this system. In the Passover seder, this is called the cup of plague. Di ba? Kung sundin mo yung traditional seder, bawat plague, ginagano yung sa lamesa. Cup of boils, flies, death of the firstborn, blah, blah. Di ba? Ibig sabihin, sa bawat plague na yun, I will redeem you without outstretch. So, dito magaling ang Diyos, mga kapatid. Sino dito may near-death experience? Na ni-rescue ka ng Panginoon. Ako, I have a near-death experience way back years ago. Na may business ako noon na yung tracking, yung help, yung nagpaparenta kami ng help para i-deliver yung mga produkto. 2013, may business ako na tracking. So, nag-hire sa akin, sa amin, yung mag-deliver ng mga ano ba yung sina roll-up doors sa Nueva Vizcaya. So, ako, tsaka yung driver mechanic, dalawa kami palitan na the drive. So, hinatid namin yung Roller up. Di ba yung roller up? May tubo yan sa dulo, sa dulo. Mga siguro, may git sampo. Alam mo, on the way there, may nangyari doon na hindi ko makalimutan. May pasulong na kalsada doon na masyadong pasulong. Ibig sabihin, kahit, kahit sa gusto mo, bibilis yung takbo mo. Pababa, no? Pag sobrang bilis na yung takbo mo kasi nga probinsya halos wala kang makitang tao sa karsada no? at tanghalin tapat ito ay biglang nakita ko mga ganyan na lang mga 15 meters away slow down children crossing so may may eskwelahan so prepreno ka talaga so promeno ka preno actually pasahero ako noon eh hindi yung nagdadrive yung mekaniko. Sumili po ko sa likod, ang bilis nang yung, alam mo, yung mga more than 16-wheeler na ilang tons na dala na palay na harvest. Ang bilis, oh, mga siguro mga 15 meters away. Parang shock na lang ako, tatama na sa amin eh. Pag tumama yun sa amin, mga kapatid, pag tumama yung dalawang, yung sampung karga namin na matulis na kwan, lampasan ng tago sa katawan namin yung mga tubo na yung patay kami on this path. Nagulat na lang kami sa bilis ng pangyayari kasi hindo ka, children's crossing, bigla, huminto yung truck. So pareho kami yung tulala, ano nangyari? Actually, Dumaplis sa likod namin eh. Parang so kiniliti lang gano'n oh. Dumaplis lang yung truck o gumano. So, so lumabas yung driver. Medyo balis na yung driver. May suot na t-shirt. God loves you. <laughs> Sabi ko, tingnan mo yung t-shirt niya. God loves you. Kaya pala siya huminto. Nawala siya ng preno. Mayroong chassis na sa tabi ng karsada kung saan nangyari, naipit yung kanyang gulong sa chassis, kaya nagkaroon siya ng preno. What are the chances na may chassis doon? Sabi ko, niligtas ako ni Adonai. Simula noon, after that, tinigil ko na yung ano, business na yun. So, anong nangyari, mga near-death experience, no? Kaya ba tayo iligtas niya doon ay? Last second. Last minute. Kaya na lang, kaya, kaya, mga kapatid. Gagamit siya ng anghel kung kinakailangan. Ito, pinapakita sa uh, Egypt kung paano siya mag-rescue, di ba? Kung paano siya mag -liktas. 
Not only that, hindi lang niya ililigtas ang mga tribulation saints, he will avenge the blood on them. Gagantihan niya pa yung mga namartir. Ano yung mga namartir? Mga pinugutan ng ulo. Nangyari na po to sa Syria. So the cup of judgment, the cup of rescue from the bondage, iyan din po ang team ng book of Revelation. The Harlot, 17.6, Revelation. God will deploy the godless forces of the Antichrist and his political Babylon allies to destroy the Harlot who was drunk with the blood of the saints. Yan. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stone pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of abomination and filthiness over fornication. And upon her for former forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, the abominations of the earth. Uh, some prophecy scholar Actually, hindi ko mahanap sa internet. There is a statue in the European Union of a woman riding a ten-horns beast which represent the European Union. Hindi ko mahanap. Ilang beses ko na hinahanap. Kung meron kayo internet, subukan nyo hanapin. So, The European Union, actually, right before our eyes, this prophecy is being fulfilled. Sabi rito, her sins have reached unto heaven. He will be judged by God who will remember her iniquities. Eighteen twenty. Rejoice over Babylon, thou heaven, and ye be holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged on her. Inihatol ng Dios ang iyong hatol sa kanya yan. Revelations nineteen one. Hallelujah! Deliverance and glory and respect and power to Yahweh our Elohim. The second time they said hallelujah and her smoke rises forever and ever. Okay, the third cup is equivalent to the third hallelujah. Naintindihan nyo ba yung pinag-uusapan dito? Parallelism, ha? Ibig sabihin, repetition of events that are similar. Hallelujah for worship. This is called the cup of redemption. And the voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you servants and those who fear Him, both small and great. And I heard as the voice of a great cloud, as the sound of many waters and the sound of mighty thunder saying, Hallelujah for Yahweh Shaddai reigns. Thou hast slain and thou hast redeemed us to God by the blood of every kindred, tongue, and people, and nation. Praise to our God. The voices of the servants who will indescribably privilege of serving Him throughout eternity fill the universe with thunderclaps and praise and adoration. For thou hast slain and hast redeemed us to God by blood of every tongue. I, have a, I heard a great voice of many people. And they have made us kingdom of priests and kings. And we shall reign. Tingnan nyo. We shall reign on earth. Ang mga saints, siyan magre-reign? Ang ibang paniwala, they will have a seven-year vacation in heaven. Okay. Assuming na mangyari yun, na rapture ang mga saints, pitong taon na sa langit. Okay. 
Okay, palagay natin, mangyari yun, example, ako hindi ako niwala-maniwala yon. Pero palagay natin, nang, nang rapture nga ang saints during the tribulation, kasi itong pinag-uusapan natin, in the middle ng tribulation, in the middle ng gulo, tsaka ka nililigtas ng Panginoon. Ibig sabihin, para kang si Sada, uh, si Lot and Abraham, habang ginajudge ang Sadam, nakita mo pa kung paano ginajudge. Para kang si Noah, na nakita mo yung flood. Para kang mga Israelites, na nakita mo ang Goshen. Nakita mo nangyari sa Egypt. Nakita mo yung pangyayari. Sa rapture, wala kang makita. Kasi nandun ka na sa... So assuming, nasa langit ka ng pitong taon, as many Christians believe. Pagkatapos ng pitong taon, saan sila babalik ulit? Bababa din ulit eh. So, anong gagawin nila sa lupa? They will rule and reign with Christ. Babalik din sa lupa. Ay, di dapat alamin mo ang programa ng Diyos sa lupa. Kasi pitong taon ka lang magbakasyon. Compare sa 1,000 years, millennial kingdom. Kaya maraming Christian, pag tinanong mo, pag sa langit, magpupuri na lang tayo sa Diyos. Hindi na tayo. Mag, ano, magpupuri na lang tayo araw-araw. Alam mo, parang they are focusing on the things that are not, you know, hindi siya realistic eh. Kasi ang sinabi, you will rule and reign for a thousand years on earth. Dapat yun ang focus. I-implement nat ako, alam, alam mo, paniwala ko, i-implement ang batas ng Diyos dito sa mundo. Kasi kingdom is not a kingdom without the law. Paano mo i-implement ang kaayusan sa mundo kung walang law? E one-third ng sibilisasyon ay nabuhay galing sa tribulation. Ay sasabihin mo sa biyaya na ulo. Mangaral ka nga ng biyaya ng Diyos sa Middle East. Napuutang ka ng ulo. And by the way, si King David in the Millennial Kingdom will be ruling and reigning from Jerusalem. He was a mighty warrior like, just like Yeshua. So I will take you to be my own people, the cup of redemption, the third cup, Revelations 18.7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him praise for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife prepared herself. And to her it was given to be dressed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the set apart ones. And he said to me, right, blessed are those who have been called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the words, true words of Elohim. Ano yung third cup ng Passover? Cup of redemption and betrothal. Ano yung third hallelujah sa revelation? Blessed are those who have been called to the marriage supper of the Lord. Do you think it's related? I think so. Kaya ako nga nire-research ito eh. Kaya nga walang sawa ako nagre-research ng Biblia eh. Gusto kong malaman talaga ang blueprint. Ito yung kaligayahan ko eh, na hindi matumbas ng kahit ano eh. Yung pag-research ng Biblia. Eh. So the third cup is called, uh, the fourth cup, now we go to the fourth cup, is the cup of Hallel and praise. So after the cup of redemption, there is what you call the cup of praise. The reason why this is called the cup of Hallel, the cup of praise, Because traditionally, Psalms 115 to 118 is being read. This is also called the cup of completion or the cup of restoration. The people will know that God has delivered them and will know that Adonai compared to a great multitude giving praise to God small and great. In the Exodus, they sang the Song of Moses. Tama? 
The song of Moses is also being sung in the book of... Do you think it's related? Yes. The pattern is the same. And we sing the song of Moses. The song of Moses, kung tignan mo yung lyrics, tinignan doon kung paano sila niligtas ng Diyos. I don't know about you. Ako, I'm excited. Kung mahilig ka manood ng boxing, ng sports, ng action, this is the great action movie. It's not just a movie. It's the greatest action whatever it is in the coming days. I'm excited. I mean, I will be in the middle of it, mga kapatid. Alam mo, mga babae, eh, hindi to may hindi kami may hindi nyo kami may tindihan mga lalaki, no? Pag nanonood ng boxing, parang parang may adrenaline, no? Bakit ang lalaki may hilig sa sports? Gusto niya ng action. Bakit ang babae may hilig sa telenovela? Gusto niya yung pagmamahala. Nakita niya yung pagkaiba? Mahirap kung yung lalaki umiiyak sa telenovela. Kawawa <laughs> naman to si Kuryano. Iniwan siya ng girlfriend niya. <laughs> Ay, delikado yan. <laughs> Ay, may babae din mahilig sa aksyon. Di ba? Sino dito may mga babae may ilis sa aksyon? Darna! <laughs> eh, basically, yung sabi, what I'm talking about is, this is exciting, mga kapatid. Actually, actually may kasamang apprehension dito. Nakakatakot siya, pero, yung sinabi ng Panginoon kay Joshua, be strong. Be of good courage. I will be with you. All you have to do is meditate on the Torah day and night so that you will be careful to obey everything that is written in you will be successful. You will be prosperous. Yun ang pangawakan mo, kapatid. Ang mahirap yan, kung ma-overcome ka ng takot, katulad ng report ng 10 spies. Bakit nagalit ang Diyos sa 12 spies, yung 10? Eh, negatibo eh. Alam mo, kung gusto mo magtagumpay sa buhay, umiwas ka mga sa taong negatibo. Magninegosyo tayo, sigurado malulugi ka, Brad. <laughs> Hindi ka pa ng negosyo na nalugi ka na. Gagawa tayo ng feasibility study na Brad, hindi na uso ngayon yan. Lugi ka siguro. Eh, yung sabi, pag-aralan mo muna. Di ba? Uh, eh, there is risk involved palagi, mga kapatid. There is always risk. Life is risky. Alam mo, by faith yan eh. Alam mo, the best example that I can think of right now is the day you decided to get married. Alam mo, I remember pumunta ako sa pastor. Oh, pastor, parang may girlfriend na ako eh. Ano ba ang gagawin ko? Ah? Kakasal ba kami? Kasi napag-aralan ko na parang hindi pa ako sure eh. Sabi ko sa pastor, hindi, ako, hindi ko alam kasi first time ako ikakasal eh. <laughs> Wala pa akong experience eh. First time kasi ako ikakasal. Sabi niya eh, alam mo, doon sa, alam pastor ko naman eh, bruce ko masyado yun eh. Doon ka rin pupunta, Brad. Walang eksperimento dyan. Kailan mo gusto ikasal? Naghanap agad ng date. Ito, Brad, wabayla po ko nito. <laughs> Ganun siya, kapasitate. Kasi, veterano na yun eh. Ang dami niya ng kinasal. Ang tinitingnan yun, pareho naman kayo mananampalataya. Alam mo, pag pareho yung pananampalataya, there are higher chances that the marriage will last longer or lifetime. That's for sure. Ano ang number one factor ng pag-aasawa? 
successful marriage, pag pareho kayo, believers. Kung pareho yung mga values ninyo. Pag hindi pareho, ang laki ng risk na. Di ba? Have you heard stories na nung naliligaw pa, sumasama magsimba? Pero nung asawa mo na, ayaw na magsimba. Maraming nangyari yan, di ba? Lalo na sa babae. Yung lalaki, nung naliligaw pa, sasama. Nung kinasal na, hindi na. Ayaw na mananampan din na. So, there's always risk, mga kapatid. No? Even in everything, there's risk. Uh, but, It is your faith that counts. Bakit tayo nagsasamba pag sabat? Bakit? Kasi naniniwala tayo pag palain tayo niya doon eh. Pinangahawakan natin yun. Nag-obey kasi kami sa fourth commandment. Ngayon, faith ko yun. At naniniwala ako doon. At sinabi naman ng Diyos, I will bless you if you keep my commandments. Ay, di yan ang pangahawakan mo. Ngayon, nangyayari ba? Yes. Nangyayari naman eh. Subok naman siya eh. Subok na siya eh. By the way, uh, believe it or not, may, may pumasok lang sa isip ko. Kasi the only people in the world that keeps the Sabbath day, the only country is Israel. The only country in the world na nagpapahinga on Sabbath is Israel. All the rest, hindi sumusunod sa Sabbath. And Israel is one of the superpower of the world. The so Israel is as big as Palawan lang daw yan kalaki. Ganun lang kalaki ang Israel. Four minutes lang sa jet plane. Dulo sa dulo ang Israel. Four minutes lang. Ubus tapos na Israel. 60% desert. One of the world's superpower in terms of uh, high technology. Bakit? Are they blessed? Yes. Alam mo, I believe in the coming millennial kingdom, Israel will be the world's superpower. America will no longer be. Europe will no longer be the superpower. Kasi lahat sila ginudge na on the great tribulation. Ito, nakita niyo ba yung exodus of God's people? So ito yan eh. Kung nakikita niyo yung nakikita ko, then naiintindihan niyo. So this is the cup of Hallel. The cup of praise. The fourth cup in the book, in the Passover, Seder. The very next, following the Passover, is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. This is a high holiday where yeast becomes the enemy of righteousness. In Revelation chapter 19, verse 11 to 19, All men who oppose God, kings, commanders, might men, free men, slaves, great and small, are killed. The false prophet and the beast are captured and thrown alive into hell. Our Messiah will wage war on all who oppress, oppose to him. In keeping the festival of the unleavened bread, our Messiah will wage war with the yeast of the world, with the leaven of the world, and will completely wipe it out. This cleanse the house to set up his reign for a thousand year millennial kingdom. Nagita niyo yung prophecy ng piece of unleavened bread? Anong, anong inuutos? Dalawa yung commandment sa unleavened bread eh. Alisin mo yung breadcrumbs. From the house, at kumain ka naman ng walang libadura. Ibig sabihin, the pure word of God. Pero at the same time, search and destroy yung mga breadcrumbs. So after the fourth hallelujah, which is equivalent to the fourth cup of praise, followed by the feast, Passover is followed by the feast of unleavened bread. Ano nangyari? Chapter 20, 21, nilinis ng Diyos ang mundo. Anong tawag doon? Inalis niya ang lahat ng mixture of good and evil. 
the yeast. So nakita nyo na yung prophetic sign ng piece of the first fruits. So after the Passover seder, followed by the piece of unleavened bread, the first day of the piece of unleavened bread, anong kasunod na feast? First fruits. So ano nangyari sa Revelation chapter 20? The resurrected will reign with the Messiah for the duration of the millennium and will never taste death again. The rest of the dead will not rise until after the millennium. Blessed are those who are part of the first resurrection. Are they related? Passover? Cleansing of the world, Babylon? Tribulation? After that, first fruits. Resurrection. So nakita mo yung prophetic sign ng face? Past? 2,000 years ago, fulfilled in the Messiah? Future. Ngayon. Alam mo, ang book of Revelation, ang pinakamahirap maintindihan ng libro sa Biblia. Pero, Basahin mo lang sa first chapter pa lang. Sinabi doon, mapalad ka kung binabasa mo ang libro na to. Wala kang makita sa ibang sinulat na Paul na mapalad kayo, binabasa niyo itong sulat ko. Pero yung book of Revelation, sinasabi, napakapalad mo kung binabasa mo ang libro ito at kung naintindihan mo. Ang, ang problema, mahirap ito intindihan. Maraming kristyano takot magbasa ng Book of Revelation. Takot. Nanginginig sa takot. Hindi alam ang gagawin. Rapture na lang tayo, pastor. Ang pastor naman, sasakay. Sige, wala nang luluha pa sa langit. Sa langit na lang tayo. Wala nang karamdaman. Wala nang... Eh, ang tawag nyo, comforting. Sana mangyari yung rapture. Itong message ko sa mga kababayan nating kristyano. Sana mangyari. Kasi kung ako nag-prepare for the end times, kung ma-rapture, walang mawala sa akin. Pero kung hindi ka nag-prepare at nagulat ka sa pangyayari, walang rapture, lugi ka. Maraming mawawala sa iyo. Masyashock ka. So this seven festival is likened to the menorah which portrays the seven biblical prophetic feasts of Yahweh. Alam mo, years ago, kagabi, pinag-uusapan namin, sabi ko, sa dami-dami ng party list, wala yung para sa Diyos. Sabi ko, maggawa kaya tayo ng party list sa 2026. I think I will be preparing for that. Batas ng Diyos, party list. Manalo nga talo. Basta malami ng Pilipino, may batas ng Diyos, party list. Pag nagtanong sila, ano ba yan? E, batas ng Diyos, party list. Pinag-usapan dito, ano ba ang batas ng Diyos? Kasi maraming batas ang Kongreso, hindi kinukonsulta ang batas ng Diyos. Mga Kristiyano naman, naniwala sa biyaya na lang Diyos, hindi pinag-aaralan ang batas ng Diyos. Yun ang kulang. Matagal na ako ina-encourage ng asawa ko eh. Alam mo, mag-aaral ka ng law. Law. Attorney. Attorney. Hindi ko, nahihirap, daming maralin dyan. Pagod na ako eh. Pero dahil sa party list, mga kapatid, nag-iisipan ko mag-enroll ako. Parang, parang, parang kailangan. Hindi, kailangan siya eh. Kailangan marunong ka sa secular law eh. Kung mayroon ka sa biblical law, mayroon ka rin sa secular law. So, graduate naman ako ng five-year course. Maybe I can take the law for two years. No? So, maging lawyer. Pwede. Pwede. Encourage nyo ako. <laughs> Oh, 
Conclusion, as you can see, the Feast of Unleavened Bread is very complex. It reminds us of the affliction of the suffering in Egypt, focusing on our spiritual walk and looking forward for the end time prophecies. As you can see, understanding the Spring Festival give a slight insight into the end of the tribulation that we can simply cannot get anywhere else. When, the, when we divorce the Jewish festival from the interpretation, it is impossible to understand the passage. The Spring Festival in Prophecy. So now, we continue with the Exodus pattern. Tama, tama. Hope we can finish this in 15 minutes. Nag-stop tayo kanina sa plagues, no? Sa Cup of uh, Judgment. Meron pa yung continuation hanggang pagpasok sa Promised Land, eh. Yan. So dito tayo Review natin Prophetic Parallels The Exodus of the people of Israel from Egypt And their journey through the wilderness Is thematically equivalent to the final Exodus of the body of Messiah Out of the world system And their journey through the wilderness of the nations The possession by the children of Israel Of the promised land Is thematically equivalent to the possession Of the millennial kingdom by the body of Messiah. Alam mo, the reason this kind of approach to end time eschatology or end time study, it's very hard to reconcile among our church brothers because church people separate themselves from the Jewish roots of their faith. Ang tingin ng Kristiyano ngayon sa mga Hudyo ay Ah, mga Judaism yan eh. Iba sa atin yan eh. Hindi naniniwala kay Kristo yan. Hindi po totoo yan. Kasi napakarami na pong believers na taga-Israel. Hindi updated ang mga Kristiyano tungkol yan. In Israel alone, there are tens of thousands of Messianic believers in Christ. In America, there are 500 thousands Messianic believers. They are not Judaism. They are believers in Yeshua. So they are our brothers. Amen. We are one in the body. Kasama sila sa body. Ang tingin ng Christian, pag Hudyo, hindi kasama sa body kasi Judaism. Mali po yun. You have to update the theology. Kung baga, lumang version na yung Android mo. Ano ba ang Android ngayon? 9.0 na? 2.0 pa yun. Kung baka sa cellphone, palitan mo na yung cellphone mo, Nokia, hindi na yan uso. I-upgrade mo yung theology. Okay. The Torah is the relevancy of the Torah for the last generation. So what is the practical relevance of those prophetic connections? Let us consider the pre-tribulation rapture doctrine. Those who believe in a pre-tribulation rapture believe that they will be translated from this earth to heaven without experiencing the tribulation. The hope of going to heaven is based on the assumption that heaven is our possession in the afterlife. In reality, our immediate possession will be that of the millennial kingdom. 1,000 years on this present earth, followed by the eternal state when Adonai comes from heaven to live on the new heavens and the new earth. Self-explanatory. Although there are many believers in the church have been taught to hope for a home in heaven, our destination is actually a home on earth, whether during the millennial kingdom or eternal state, once the new heavens and the new earth have been created, we will see later why this false hope is important. Let us ask the following question. When the, when the children of Israel, where did they think they were going? Into the wilderness to worship Adonai? Direct to the promised land? 
into the wilderness to worship Adonai, followed by a quick trip to the promised land. A careful examination of the book of Exodus reveals that through Pharaoh, though Israel was only going out to the wilderness to worship Adonai, the Israelite expected to worship Adonai in the wilderness and then make a quick trip to the promised land. If you read the above passage very carefully, you will notice that whenever Moses speaks to Pharaoh, he always tells him to let Israel go on a short journey into the wilderness to worship, wilderness to worship Adonai. He never tells Pharaoh to let the people go so that they can be free from slavery. In contrast, whenever he speaks to the children of Israel, he tells them that they will worship in the wilderness and then he goes to the promised land. So magaling ito si Moses. Nauto niya si Pero. So, why didn't Israel go directly to the promised land after receiving the Torah? They took 40 years to get to the promised land. For various reasons, Adonai purposed that the children of Israel obtain the promised land only after a period of testing and endurance. Furthermore, they had to dispossess the countries through warfare. The mga Canaanites, mga Jebusites, yung mga nag-occupy doon. Although the children of Israel thought they were going directly to the promised land and actually they were at the threshold of many years of testing in the wilderness. So what analogy can we make to the last generation? An understanding of the two critical thematic parallels between the original Exodus and the end time Exodus clearly shows us the following. The people of Israel were promised a kingdom in the promised land. All believers have been promised a kingdom, the millennial kingdom, pareho. The people of Israel made an exodus from Egypt in the last generation. God's people will make an exodus from the spiritual Egypt, Babylon. People of Israel wanted to go directly to their land of inheritance apart from the wilderness experience, apart from fighting for the land. Believers today want to go directly to their land of inheritance, the millennial, the millennial kingdom, apart from the wilderness experience and apart from fighting for the land, they want to be raptured. So, Abedito, as you can see, things haven't changed much over the centuries and we are no better off than our ancestors. When it is time for the body of Messiah to make its exodus from this world into the millennial kingdom, most expect to go there without any period of wilderness testing. We don't expect to go through any wilderness trials. We don't want to fight the battles of Jericho. We want to go directly to our inheritance. We want the inheritance without any struggle. But that is impossible. There are basically two obstacles um, the people of Israel had to overcome in order to obtain the promised land. Ibig sabihin mga kapatid, if you are a Torah believer and if you believe in the blueprint of the Torah, napakaliwana ang plano ng Diyos. Passover, salvation, corporate and individual. The Lamb of God is Jesus Christ, is Yeshua Masiyah. So naligtas tayo. So the people of Israel is equivalent to the believers today who were saved by the blood of the Lamb. After that, unleavened bread, pagbabago ng buhay, sanctification, pagsunod sa commandments ng Diyos, kabanalan, the power of resurrection, the hope of the resurrection, which is future. Wala pang, meron naman dito na resurrect? Uh, wala pa, di ba? Pagkatapos nun, ng Passover, ang level bread, receiving of the Torah. Pentecost. Pagkatapos nun, ano nangyari? 40 years wandering in the... After 40 years, a time of trial and testing. Why do you think Yeshua fasted and prayed for 40 days before entering the promised land to do His ministry? 
Out of Egypt, I called you my son. Why do you think the gospel portrays Yeshua as coming out from Egypt? Because he's a picture of Israel coming from the wilderness. After fasting in Portage, saan na fasting si Yeshua? Sa wilderness. Alam mo, in 2010, may lugar sa Israel na they believe na doon nag-fasting si Yeshua. Pumunta po kami doon. Malapit sa Jericho. Sa border ng Palestine. Maraming tao takot pumunta doon. Pero kami, hindi kami takot. Punta tayo, minsan lang tayo dito. Bahala na, minsan lang tayo dito. Pag pumunta ka doon, mga kapatid, butas-butas yung mga building ng 50 caliber. Pero ang tapang namin, oh. Pakala mo, hindi tinatablan ng bala, eh. Eh, bakit, eh? Ang lakas ng pit, eh. Kasi pag nagputokan doon, dadapa lang naman ako. Dapa! Hindi <laughs> naman tayo lalaban, eh. So, so basically, mga kapatid, yun ang pattern. There is going to be an obstacle. Trials and testing. Anong sinabi? Whether you obey. God wants to test you whether you obey Yahweh or not. Alam mo, ano yung nangyayari sa atin? Bakit tayo nandito? Bakit tayo nagtitipon? Bakit tayo nagsa-celebrate ng peace? The same thing. Tinitesting tayo ng Panginoon. Mag-obey ka ba, anak, o hindi? Hindi mo pwedeng dayayan ng Diyos. Dalawa lang pwede mong gawin. It's either nag-obey ka or hindi. The fact na most of us came from a long drive from Manila, I think, seryoso ka sa pag-obey. Kasi mahirap pumunta dito, lalo na ngayon, mataas na yung gasolina, di ba? Yes. So nag-obey ka. The same thing. Tinitesting ng Diyos whether you obey or not. When, sabi naman, it's to tell you that men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of Elohim. Saan galing? Nung sinabi ni Jesus yan, sinabi ni Yeshua, saan galing yan? Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 8. Anong context? Alam mo, pag may kinukot sa New Testament, balikan mo yun kasi yun yung context. Alam mo bakit tinawag na Deuteronomy? Deuteronomy. Dandan mo. Deuteronomy. Kaya tinawag sa Deuteronomy kasi nomi means law, nomos. Deuter means repetition of the law. Bago namatay si Moses, inulit niya ang Ten Commandments sa bagong generasyon. Kaya tinawag siyang Deuteronomy. Brother, akala ko, uh, yung second commandment yan eh. Jew unto me, as I Jew unto you. Jew unto me. Ikaw naman eh, pero ito ba eh. <laughs> Ibig sabihin, the reiteration of the Ten Commandments. At sinabi ni Yeshua, hindi niya inaabolis ang Ten Commandments. Sinasabi niya, Alam mo ba yung pangyayari sa Deuteronomy chapter 8? Na tinetesting kayo ng Diyos? Na men shall not live by bread alone. Mabubuhay ka sa bawat salita ng Torah ang tinutugoy niya doon. Hindi New Testament. Wala pang New Testament noon. Hindi pa sinulat. Baka si Pablo nandun pa sa Bible school nag-aaral. <laughs> ng Orthodox Judaism. Hindi pa siya misayari. Wala pang sinulat si Pablo. Palaban pa nga siya ng Diyos nun eh. Yes. Kaya when you remove the Jewishness of the roots of the Bible, naiiba yung interpretasyon. So after, on the brink of entering the promised land, the new generation, which is the last generation, we believe to, is about to enter the promised land. Si Moses ay magre-retiro na. 
Meron akong kaibigan na Canadian na nag-greet sa akin kanina. Shabbat shalom. Sabi niya, huwag na tayo, do na, we will not be tired. Sabi niya, huwag na tayo mapagod. Malapit ng babalik ang Panginoon. Kasi he came from a Christian background. Siguro nakikita niya yung end times parang nakakapagod na. Alam mo sagot ko sa kanya? Brother, Moses was retired for 40 years in media. After his retirement, God retired him for another 40 years. Do not think of retirement, brother. There is no word in the Bible for retirement. Siguro, matanda na kasi yun eh. So, ibig sabihin, mga kapatid, may successor si Moses. Sino ang successor ni Moses? Ronnie, sino? Ha? Sino ang sumunod kay Moses, ayapak ni Moses? Who is the successor of Moses? O mga bata, sino? Joshua? Son of? He is the first Catholic in the Bible. Son of none. Alam mo, what Joshua means in Hebrew? Joshua. My son's name is Joshua. You know what it means? It's the same as Yeshua. Nagbago lang yung isang bawel. It's the same meaning. Who will lead Israel into the promised land? Joshua. Sino siya? It's Yeshua. Hindi niyo ba nagkita ang prophecy? Who will bring us to the promised land? Doon na milit niyo kita. Yeshua! Palagpakan natin si Yeshua. Ang nga lang yung kasi, Torah, walang Yeshua. Kakamalin sila. Mas lalo tayong madiin kay Yeshua. All prophecy leading to Yeshua. Who will, anong gagawin ni Yeshua? He will lead Israel to enter the promised land. But, ito yun, there is going to be warfare first. Walang rapture na naganap. There is going to be war. Kung ang Islam may holy war, ang Biblia po may holy war. Cleansing. Pero, ang magkli-cleansing nito ang Diyos mismo at ang kanyang mga sundalo sa langit. Pero gagamit din siya ng mga lingkod niya. Anong utos kay Joshua? You will dispossess the enemies in the land. You will, sabi niya, destroy their idols. Wipe out their idols. In other words, mga kapatid, hindi pa tapos ang laban. Huwag ka muna mag-isip ng rapture. May holy war pa. Pastor, nakakapagod. Gusto ko na mag-retire. O sige, bahala ka na. Mag-text na lang tayo, ha? Saka, sa, na, sama mo naman ako dyan sa langit, seven years. Masaya kaya yan. I'm just telling you, mga kapatid, an illustration from the Torah, the real scenario. If Israel had obeyed Adonai, they would gone straight to the promised land. However, this was not the case. Because of their disobedience, Adonai made Israel to go through the wilderness experience which served two purposes for different groups of people. First, the wilderness was a time when those who are unfaithful to Adonai will be judged. Those who passed the final test were able to receive their land inheritance. But the wilderness was the place where the unfaithful were judged. The same scenario is about to occur at the end of the age. Most churchgoers have no idea of the prophetic significance of the tribulation or its relationship to the wilderness judgment. They just think it's a bad time here on earth. And the reason they think is because they neglect the Torah. The wilderness of the tribulation has been stripped of its intending meaning and purpose. Its prophetic context has been obscured through the dismissal of the Torah as relevant for our generation. 
Paul certainly didn't think that Torah had nothing to do with the last generation. He made a connection in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Later, those who will later inherit the promised land were purified and refined to help them possess the land and establish the nation. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Be careful to follow every commandment I'm giving you today, so that you may live and increase and enter the promised land that Adonai promised to your fathers. Remember how Adonai your Elohim led you all the way to the desert for 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep His commandments. He humbled you, causing you to hunger and feeding you with manna. Okay? So that to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Yahweh. Your clothes did not so. So basically, it's a trial or testing. Wilderness means that I Kung ano yung sitwasyon natin ngayon, we are being tested. So now we can see that the wilderness trials were run, weren't just about the destruction of the ungodly. They also had another divine purpose. The wilderness trials, ito po, refined the faithful, equipping them for the battle that lies ahead. When the people of Israel would need to dispossess the nation greater and mightier than themselves. This is the same agenda that Adonai has for a select group of people at the end of the age. They will experience gain in tribulation, will help them bring into the millennial kingdom. So likewise, the last generation will undergo intense battles in the great tribulation. This is the other aspect of Adonai's end-time purpose that most believers are totally unaware. So believing on this pattern, mga kapatid, alam mo, sa, paano huhusay ang isang sundalo? Huhusay ba siya kung hindi siya dadaan sa gera sa Marawi? Paano siya bigyan ng medal of valor kung hindi siya nakaranas doon ng paggapang sa paggera sa mga busayat? Hindi ka deserving ng medal of valor. Paano ka pagbigyan ng Panginoon ng mga award mo? Eh wala ka namang ginawa. Aawardan ka ba ng principal kung wala kang ginawa? Today is your graduation. Paano yun, Ann? Today I am graduation. I'm going to invite you to eat my house. Nagkaharal ka pa. <laughs> Di ba? Alam mo, iba yung in ka na deserving talaga, di ba? Iba yung feeling, proud na proud ka, di ba? Paano ka tawagin sundalo ng Diyos kung wala kang pinagdaanan na gera? Paano ka tawagin men of faith kung hindi mo sinubukan kung hanggang saan ang faith mo? Kung takot ka na agad. Bakit nagalit ang Diyos sa 10 reports ng 10 spies? Takot eh. Ang, ang, alam mo Joshua, ang, ang higanti yung mga tao doon. Kakainin ka ng buhay. Anong sabi ni Joshua? Sila yung kakainin kong buhay. Gagawin ko silang pulutan. Tapang. Tapang, di ba? Ayaw ng Diyos yung duwang, mga kapatid. So marami pala ang mga asawa na papasok sa tribulation. Sila yung matatapang eh. Ngeeeh! <laughs> 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 ha? Ano pa na yung GA sa'yo? Ako, tapang lalaki. <laughs> Hindi tapo. Mga kapatid, faith yan eh. Actually, actually, wala naman talaga tayong kalaban-laban ka eh. Pero, may Diyos tayo mga kapatid. Yun, yun ang pagkaiba natin eh. Kung kakakapit, alam mo, sabi nga ni Paul, sabi ni Yeshua, huwag kang matakot sa papatay sa laman mo dahil hindi nila kayang patayin ang kaluluwa mo. Bubuhayin naman ako uli ng Diyos eh. 
Alam mo si Belica, our good friend na attorney Jeremiah Belica? Ganun ang paniwala nila si Greco. Bakit matapang si Greco? Alam mo yung posisyon ng Greco, anti-corruption chairman ng PACC? Ang daming galit dyan. Ang daming gustong pumatay dyan. Alam mo sagot ni Greco? Bubuhay naman ako ulit ni Lord eh. Patay niya ako. Bubuhay naman ako ulit eh. Sa palagay mo, si Lord, si Adonai, hindi niya binabaka pa si Greco? Men of faith? Sa palagay mo, lingkod ng Diyos, kung may nagbabalak ng masama, hindi alam ng Diyos? Una na silang patayin ng Diyos. Mga kapatid. Bakit? I will set you apart. Naglilingkod ka sa akin, ito. Alam mo? One of you will put 100 to fight. One hundred of you will put ten thousand to flight. Ano ibig sabihin yan? Habang dumadami yung sumusunod sa commandments ng Panginoon, mas matindi yung kapangyarihan ng minamanifest ng Diyos. Nalita mo? Habang dumadami, may tinatawag na multiplying effect. Multiplying effect. Habang dumadami, mas matindi. Ang one hundred daw, isang libo tatakbo. Nangyari po yan sa Israel noong 1968 war tsaka 1974 war. Lahat ng kalaban na mga nations around Israel, nanalo ba o natalo? Buhay ba ang Diyos? Ayun ang tingnan nyo. Kaya ako, ganun din ako. Hindi ako takot. Hindi ako mamay. Alam ako, secure na ako eh. From womb to the tomb. From conception to resurrection. Safety na ako. Hindi na ako takot. Pero alam ko, anong pangako ng Diyos sa mga naglilingo sa Kanya? Ano yun, Jay? It's a tree of life? Yung binabasa natin, it's kain? Long life and peace. Shalom will be to them that serve and follow and keep the commandments. So, pangako ng Diyos yan. We hold on to the promise. Kaya nga tayo mananampalataya. We believe. Yan ang pagkaiba sa atin. Okay, why the warfare? Five to ten minutes. It is unfortunate that most believers think they are receiving heaven as their reward. Although heaven may be the place where we will await the resurrection, the rejuvenated earth of the millennial kingdom and the new heavens and the new earth of the eternal state are where we will find our ultimate destiny. Blessed are the meek. They shall inherit the earth, the land. It's called the millennial kingdom. So mga kapatid, uh, ilang slide na lang ito. Let's be disciplined. I will not take, we will have a part two on this. We will, we will end up here. Sa warfare. Mayroon pa ito konti na lang. About uh, 10 slides. But to explain that, it will require another 30 minutes. So we'll keep that uh, on the part two of the Exodus pattern and the blueprint of the end times decoded. It's very hard to find a research like this, mga kapatid. I've been compiling this for the last 10 years. Ngayon ko lang na put together lahat to. So I'm so excited na nakikita ko na yung blueprint of the end times. Ano sa ka pattern? Exodus. Simple. When you do the Passover, you will understand. Okay? So... Blessed be Adonai our God, tayo po tayong lahat, King of the Universe, who has given us eternal life through Yeshua Mashiach, and who has blessed us with the knowledge of the Torah. Amen. Tayo po tayong lahat. Uh, we stand before Yahweh Wim, and may I call on uh, Brother Alvin and Brother Joji for our prayers and supplication and blessing. Okay? Meron ba dito gustong tumanggap sa Panginoon? Pakilapit na lang.
At gusto nyo mag-pray, punta kayo sa harapan, kung gusto nyo magpa-pray, uh, kagagaling lang namin sa fasting and prayer, we can help you pray. Na? Okay, brother. Let's pray. Blessed are you, O Lord God, King of the universe. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, for giving us a glimpse of what it is to come. We thank you that through your word, things that are going to pass reveal to us. And we thank you, my Facebook that we can, we can trust you with the history that we have on board, Father. We thank you that you are giving us So you reach me at yahoo.com, at yahoo.com, B-R-O-A-I-K-E, at yahoo. Thank you for watching. God will bless you, Lord. See you next time. You have given us the knowledge of your commandments and your Torah. Thank you, Father, that we can prepare 